Another thing which is very confusing for buyers, sellers, is the actual process from accepting an offer because there's plenty of different milestones and things that need to be carried out. Mm -hmm. Once an offer has been accepted, yeah. What is the next step? What is the next step? Uh, depends who you ask, but uh, we were saying before this, actually, uh, sometimes it's best to remove all the jargon and just keep it really, really simple. So I think the, the, the ball starts rolling really on the legal process when the offer's been accepted and the memorandum of sales had gone out, which is the letter telling buyer and seller, yeah, this is What's agreed. been agreed yeah, for the price who, who everyone's solicitors are and all that sort of thing. Um, the next steps if you're buying um, is you'll normally have to pay some money on account to your solicitor so they can get on with doing the work. And they won't do anything until that money has been received. Well, no, because uh, they want some sort of commitment from you that they're not doing all this work for nothing. So, yeah, uh, yeah they do need uh, do need some sign of commitment from, uh, from people. And what's kind of the average kind of cost um, for that? Normally somewhere under 100 quid. Um, it does depend on the solicitor at the end of the day. And don't forget, some solicitors might charge a bit more up front, but do mo no move, no fee, which is not necessarily a bad idea because if you aren't doing no move, no fee, and let's not forget that uh, property transactions fall through. If you look at the stats, you're left with a big bill. So, um, so there is that. If you're buying, certainly with a mortgage, you'll need to pay for your local authority searches as well uh, towards the start of the process too. So local authority searches, short version, it's the checking you, a load of things to make sure that there's not stuff that you're legally liable for. Um, I always flippantly used to say they're checking that you don't owe, owe the church a new roof when it needs repairing and you're not about to fall down a coal mine. That's the sort of thing that they're checking out on local authority. And searches. do you have to have those? You certainly do if you're having a mortgage. Uh, the lender will insist on that most of the time. We won't confuse things too much by saying that there are some lenders who will allow a search indemnity, um, although that's few and far between these days. That was a bit of a COVID years thing when local authorities were taking. Yeah. Some of them were taking six months to do searches. It's not like that anymore. So it's normally a relatively quick, um, a quick and painless process. Um, you don't have to have them on a cash purchase. Up to you. Is it a good idea? Probably. It's like those things which are optional, like surveys and what have you. Optional. You don't have to have a lender survey uh, or lender valuation report. But if you want a home buyer's report or a full structural survey, you can. It's a good idea, but you don't need to do it. Um, I didn't have one when I bought my house. But, uh, In terms of the search, that environmental yeah. search, what's the kind of turnaround on that? Depends a little bit on the local authority. We're finding most are probably back within two weeks. Um, some parts of the country, it might be up to a month, but we're not in that world now where they were taking... Eight weeks, 12 Oh weeks. yeah, you know, they, I, I think I saw the worst was Camden Council or something like that were, were taking six months at one point. Uh, that, but that was during the COVID years where everyone wanted to buy and sell a house. Yeah. Uh, that was, those heady days uh, and there's free money from the government and everything it was brilliant uh, <laughs> anyway we've gone off topic um so yeah you, you, your local so authority searches will come back in that same sort of time if you're buying a property the seller's solicitors will will have had their initial paperwork and bits and pieces back from from their client and and that will be shared with your solicitor if you're if you're the buyer um and they'll kind of enter this stage where there is called exchanging inquiries, which sounds very mystical. It's not. It's supposed to speak for leave me alone, um, like I said. But what they're doing is they're just checking out that there's nothing which is going to come and bite you in the butt legally. So it's, it's, I like to think about it. They're, they're, they're working out which stones need you know, turning over and just making sure that there's a paperwork to, to make sure that there's, 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 there's no problems there at all. So um, a good example would be, uh, I live in a really old two bed terrace house, but at some point uh, a wall has been taken down to uh, make a kitchen dining yep. room. Uh, and one of the things was it didn't appear that there was any buildings uh, uh, consent uh, for the works uh, when they were done in the 1970s. Obviously there isn't going to be anything, but the solicitor advised that we set up an indemnity policy to make sure that no one could come back and 
sue me for a load of money to put this wall back and pay for it. So it's that sort of thing that they're working out. Um, and is that in with the draft contract? Is it? So in regards to to uh, to that, yes, potentially. I, I think what 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 we'd find is the a lot of this is almost like prep work ready for the draft contracts to be exchanged because yep. that's what we're trying to get to and, and this is why I think I don't like to get too bogged down in the terminology we're getting to this point where everyone has all the information both parties are aware of everything they need to be aware of to put together a draft contract that they're everyone's going to be happy to sign so we, we you know, ultimately all this is to is geared towards building towards that draft contract to the point where everyone is kind of happy yet yeah, okay we're happy to take this draft contract to a signed contract that means we're going to exchange and agree what we're paying for. you know it's set in stone at that point that this is all legally legally binding and um, whilst this is all going on as well you've got the mortgage side of things going on and solicitors process should take a heck of a lot longer than the mortgage side of things especially yeah. you know there's mortgage office sometimes coming out in 24 hours these days where a lot of it's automated but it certainly shouldn't be taking the usual length of time that it takes to get to this point of exchange of contracts which is normally we're finding being around about 12 13 weeks at the moment certainly come down an awful lot in the last uh, in the last 18 months or so um but don't forget nothing's legally binding until you've actually exchanged contracts yeah so this is uh, the point of no return, as I always re refer to it as. You can walk away before exchange of contracts. All you've lost is any money you spent on surveys and upfront money to your solicitor if you did no move, no fee. Um, we don't like people to walk away right at the last minute. It's rather frustrating for everybody uh, concerned. And it doesn't happen too much. You get to that late stage, but those do hurt because you remember them when you've, you've held everyone's hand for a long time. But normally about 13 weeks in, you get to this point, yeah, okay, we're exchanging contracts, everything's agreed, everyone's happy, all those stones that we've unturned that we might need a bit of documentation for, or might need something else just to address it, they're all, all sorted, everyone's happy, you exchange contracts, and that's when you set a, a moving date at, at, at the end of the day. That's normally set a week or two after you've exchanged contracts to give people time to arrange removals if there's a mortgage involved a lot of mortgage lenders need five working days for funds requests they can do it quicker if needs be but it's a lot of paperwork behind the scenes and business development managers don't like it if you do it too often um so uh yeah you do that and then on, on the day of completion because that day's um been um been set in stone your conveyancer will have made sure that all the money's been requested from mortgage lender. If there's any extra that you've got to put in, they, 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 you know that's that's on account as well. So all the monies can move around on that day. Um, all the monies can move around on that day, and the and the, the house is bought for the price that you uh, that everyone has uh, agreed for it. The question which comes up quite a bit is, what if you're selling a property as well? And people sometimes ask, do I have to wait for my house to complete and and then send that money somewhere else? But it's not it's not that complicated. Um, in essence, it all goes through at the same time. So as long as at the same time, all, all, all the money is there to make sure everyone in the transaction is squared off and has the right amount of money. So effectively doesn't see any of that money, do they? Yeah, you, you, you might see a surplus uh, yeah. if, if, if you've got money left over of your, maybe at the bottom of the, or, or, or the top of the chain, you're not buying something else. Um, but uh, yeah, that's kind of all just taken taking care of. Um, I mean, the most stressful day in the transaction is probably that completion day because everyone's fretting about when can I get my keys? When can I get my keys? And you can be waiting until five o'clock in the uh, state and it's about to I close. Have, and... I have seen a few, yeah, get, uh, over the years where it's getting on a little bit in the day. And that's always a stressful, um, it's always a stressful time because you you can't get your keys until every, you know, until it's been confirmed that all the transactions to it's balance. Like, it's like the domino effect, isn't it? Yeah, so you've got to wait for the whole, you know, for your point in the chain to be at the point where everyone's squared off um, and, and, and ready to go. And yeah, that is that is a stressful day. Uh, you know, I remember we always used to be last Friday of the month. Always seemed to be the day where everyone wanted to complete. And I just knew you just don't book appointments that day because you are probably going to have to drop everything and deal with something. Um, yeah. And it always works out in the end. But 
sometimes it's stressful. It's, it's switching, though. <laughs> yeah. It's switch, twitchy bum time, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, definitely, definitely.